Do you want to max out your archetype so when the full game releases, you can feel like a god? Perhaps you want to have so much Magla that unlocking or inheriting skills in the academia becomes child's play. Do you like having a lot of money? Well, this is the guide for you. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a quick farming guide about how to farm AXP, EXP, money, and Magla in Metaphor Refantasia. Both methods are definitely very effective and I'll go through both methods in detail and as well as go through some bonus tips as well. So there are two main farming routes in the Metaphor Refantasio Prologue demo, one being in the Belega Corridor, which I have a video on how to unlock that dungeon on my channel, so definitely check it out. And the other is in the Cathedral Main Story Dungeon, where you need to find and thwart the Necromancer schemes. Both work fine and will get the job done, however, the Cathedral Dungeon is definitely better in my opinion and it's just more efficient. As mentioned before, I do have some bonus tips at the end of this video, so definitely keep watching and stay tuned. So for the Belega Corridor farm, basically once you clear the dungeon and beat the Gaptorus in this building here, what you want to do is you want to go to this cat and basically TP back um, to the entrance of the dungeon. And once you TP back to the entrance of the dungeon, you basically just want to run through the dungeon, defeating enemies over and over again um, as the goblins um, and as well as some of those um, rabbit dogs etc actually do respawn and they do respawn in fit, uh, infinitely. So now the trick with any of these farms is that you will want to defeat the enemies in the overworld basically not initiating a turn based fight. Um, and this is because initiating turn based fights will actually take a lot longer uh, for your farm um, and it's just not very efficient in that regard. So in order to do that is basically you just need to do Gallica scan and you need to have a look at the goblin enemies. So if they turn blue that means you can defeat them in the overworld. If they are yellow or if they're red, it means that even if you do hit them with an attack, so for example, if I do this, even if you do that, for example, then you will initiate a stun instead and then you know go into squad for a, a squad-based, turn-based attack. So those enemies were blue, for example, but if you come over in here, you can see that this enemy here is actually level 16. So the issue that I have with this farm is that some of those enemies in this dungeon, especially those goblins as you can see are level 16, because your level in general in this dungeon, you know, depending on your difficulty, I'm playing on hard, but if you're playing on easy or normal, I believe, I think the max level you can get after this dungeon, if you do this dungeon, like, you know, the first time you do this dungeon, for example, is around 12 to 13. And because it's 12 to 13, basically just means you need to level up to around 16, 17, or even 18 to be able to defeat those enemies just with one shot, essentially. So that obviously means that it's going to be a lot slower to do this farm. And I mean, you can obviously skip those enemies and just, for example, you can just go down to like these ones in here, you know, and for example, these mods are low level. And and then you can see that that one is, uh, that Hexagoburn is actually like not low level. So if you do that, for example, then it's not a big deal and you can skip them and go through and then eventually you're going to level up. Um, however, that's just, you know, it's just going to take a lot, a lot more time. And actually running through this dungeon in general to run the path straight back to the boss room and then continuing back to the entrance is actually quite long as well. So in terms of that and all that stacking together, I don't believe this is the most efficient way of doing it. Obviously, you can definitely do it. I've seen so many guys on YouTube already that they basically run through the Belega Corridor and keep doing it and they've mastered everything. So by all means, definitely a method that works. However, those are the few caveats that you do need to be aware of. You need to be able to defeat those enemies easily in the overworld in order to make it efficient. If not, you're going to initiate a turn-based battle and then you're just going to have to be stuck in the turn-based battle, which obviously takes a lot longer. Um, until you can actually get to around 16, 17, which is the highest level in the dungeon. Now onto the Cathedral Dungeon, which in my opinion is the much better farm and is more efficient uh, for a lot of reasons, which I'll discuss. But if you're liking this video so far, please leave a like and subscribe for more Metaphor Refantasia. So in the Cathedral Dungeon, you want to take the same principles about just defeating enemies on the overworld rather than initiating turn-based attacks. Um, and you want to just do that over and over again. So for the Cathedral Dungeon, you want to progress through the dungeon. Uh, until you get to the point where you see all these undead people and then, you know, the soldier runs off and then, you know, there's skellies everywhere. Um, and eventually, you know, when you run through, you'll come across these red crystals here. And the game basically tells you that these red crystals are, you know, they're, they're a bunch of enemies um, and you need to defeat them. Otherwise, these enemies will basically just keep infinitely respawning. So as you can see, once I defeat those enemies, you can see that the skeletons keep respawning. And then, you know, that's essentially it. Like, seriously, they honestly just keep respawning. Um, and the caveat is you cannot destroy these red crystals. 
um, under any circumstances, otherwise, you know, the skeletons won't. Oh, as you see, I just leveled up the secret just then. Um, you cannot uh, destroy these red crystals, and there's no red crystal here, so you can basically double up. So you can have four that spawn here, four that spawn here. So each crystal um, will spawn four skeletons at a time, and then you basically just infinitely do this. Um, and it's just a lot more efficient. And because the reason why it's efficient is because, as you can see, these skeletons right off the bat are only level 6 which basically means because they're level 6 um, and because by, by the time you get here you'll probably be around 11, 12 levels, uh, 11, 12 um, as I mentioned before you can easily defeat them on the overworld without actually needing or having much effort in order to grind to like level 16 for example so this farm immediately becomes efficient because you can immediately do this on hard mode without actually having to lower the difficulty if you don't want to necessarily right so I did this farm for about one and a half hours so far, and I'm going to continue doing it to rank up at least all of these, uh, all the archives I have. But in one and a half hours, I was able to rank up my mage to max. I was able to rank up um, Brawler for Stroll to max. And I was able to rank up the Knight to max as well. So if you take that and extrapolate that, then you can say that like within three hours you'll have... So about one hour is about three max archetypes. So in about, you know two hours for example you are six and then i think each person has approximately what's that one two three four so six archetypes each so that's what 18 archetypes so that will take about um, six hours in order to max every single archetype so it's definitely well worth it um and you know this this farm is just super efficient like the enemies just honestly keep respawning infinitely and um it doesn't require any sort of effort um, because you don't need to unlock a dungeon. This is a story dungeon, so this story dungeon everyone has access to uh, and will have access to. And because you're already immediately high, like high level than the enemies, then immediately you can start just defeating enemies on the overworld without actually needing to level up in order to do that. Now, if you talk raw numbers, the Belegas Corridor, the level 16 enemies, uh, and just the high level enemies in general, obviously do give more XP. However, actually the low level Go Burns actually do eventually give the same amount of XP as um, as a skeleton. However, the high level uh, Go Burns, like the level 16 ones, for example, they do give uh, a lot more. Um, and XP actually does scale off the level. So the higher your party level or the higher the MC level, the lower uh, the amount of XP you actually do get. So when you actually first start this farm, each skeleton's giving around about, I think it's like five exp and about eight um eight or nine uh, uh archetype exp um and now it's basically scaled down to two and three uh, respectively so you know once you do go up the levels you you obviously do uh get a little bit less exp um however in the belaga corridor you do get more per level 16 go born however again with that farm you do need to go through the dungeon tp back to the entrance which does actually take a lot of time and also with the farming routes as well um, there's a lot more running rather than moving between those two crystals, which are not even like, you know, a couple meters apart, a few meters apart, for example. So the skeleton one, in my opinion, is just, yeah, it's just better. And <laughs> I just lo I love farming it more because, um, I don't even need to change the difficulty of my game. It's literally just on hard, you know, you don't need necessarily need to change it to easy in order to make it a, an easier time. Um, you can just defeat enemies on the overworld. And yeah, so just make sure you don't defeat the red crystals um, and skeletons will infinitely respawn. Just infinitely defeat them and you'll just gain EXP. Alright, so now it goes through some bonus tips for the farm. Um, so if you are doing the farm, you know, you can set the difficulty easy to make it easier for yourself in case you do get ambushed and in case something does happen. Um, you know, it'll be on easy so you can survive that stuff uh, more easily. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. Uh, if you are grinding anyway, there's no really shame in it. Um, I mean, you're kind of exploiting I guess the 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 nature of the of the infinitely spawning crystals anyway so it doesn't really matter play how you want to play this is a game you know single player game whatever you want to do is whatever you want to do and just have fun with it now another tip is that your MC's uh, main archetype actually depends uh, determines sorry your main uh, move so for example if I do um, switch to the mage for example um, as you can see when I do my overworld attack it's this massive swell and then if I switch to something like uh, the, the Seeker, for example, which I was at before, um, it's a it's basically just a uh, sword attack. And then if I switch to something like the Healer, it would be a big bonk, uh, essentially. So if I go Healer here, uh, I bonk enemies with my club, essentially. 
So it doesn't really matter what you use, especially if you're looking to rank up a certain archetype. So for example, if I'm looking to rank up healer, I'm gonna have to use healer either way. However, if you've already maxed out all your favorite archetypes for the MC, um, and you're trying to rank up the archetypes for your party members like Stroll and Hulkenberg, then it's definitely more efficient. Um, again, this is my opinion to go with the mage. And that's purely because the mage's swirl is actually AOE. So if I just look at the skeletons, for example, here, I can literally group up the skeletons and beat them in one fell swoop, which basically means, you know, every time you beat a skeleton, essentially another one will respawn. Um, so in that regard, it's a lot more efficient because you can just respawn more skeletons pretty much immediately. Um, but you do need to be careful with the swirl because because it's AOE, you might actually hit the red crystal. So. You know, you just want to be careful of that. And also, if you do manage to hit the red crystal, it's not the end of the world because when you go back to the safe room, which is very conveniently located, like right next to the farm, by the way, guys. This is another reason why I love this farm. Um, once you do reach that certain aspect, um, your red crystal health will actually go back to full. So you don't have to worry about accidentally, over time, defeating the red crystals. So another tip you can utilize within the combat here is basically your lock on. So if you lock on to an enemy, no matter how far away you are, as long as you can lock onto an enemy, if you press square, you can actually dash it and it'll automatically lock on to the enemy in order to do the attack. So if you're far away, you can easily do that. Um, that way you're not swinging and missing, for example. It's just a little optimization, um, but because these enemies are so weak anyway, it doesn't, it's not really a big deal. Uh, another tip is when leveling archetypes, um, you can actually level them up a bit further uh, once you hit master. So once you hit master and you actually level your archetypes up more, um, they will actually keep gaining XP. And then once they max out that XP for that archetype, you will actually get an item called Hero's Leaf of Light. Now, this item is very, very good. And I do highly recommend that even if you do max out all your um, archetypes to master, just keep going if you have the time, um, because this gives you a thousand uh, archetype e EXP, which will be super useful for not you know, having to grind for the new archetypes you unlock within the lineage. Um, and some of those archetypes you know, obviously you won't be able to unlock in the prologue demo, but when the full game releases, any of these EXP uh, boosting items will definitely be of use. So definitely keep that in mind. So level up your archetypes past master in order to get these items. So speaking of archetypes, the reason you may want to do this farm or any farm in general is because to unlock the lineage per archetype, uh, it does require the previous archetype to be mastered. Um, and that is a lot of grinding, trust me. As I mentioned before, it's basically an hour to get three of those archetypes max. So as you can see, for example, my mage currently is mastered. And as you can see, um, for the next uh, lineage of the mage, you do require Galica to be a rank three, but you also require the mage to be rank 20, which is rank master. And we also require a lot of uh, Magler as well. So I guess the offshoot with these farms is that you do actually get a lot of money and a lot of Magler um, from this farm because every enemy you defeat gives you EXP, AXP, uh, money and Magler. Um, but yeah, basically you do need to rank up these to rank 20 in order to actually get <laughs> the next in the lineage. So that's with the case with everything. So as you can see for the Seekers next um, line, uh, with more, you do require Seeker rank 20, you know, healer, you do require healer rank 20, etc. Which is exactly right, you kind of want to do this. Um, it basically means you can play with these archetypes earlier um, than, I guess, expected, um, leading to more, you know, cool stuff that you can play earlier in the game. And who doesn't want that when you, when you can unlock more stuff in an RPG? Now, I do have to mention, um, again, that you do get quite a lot of money and Magla <laughs> within uh, this farm. And as you can see, I've got nearly 100k Magla and nearly, you know, 70k, uh, sorry, 60k money. So having a lot of money in any of these games is obviously very good. But however, if you're not too sure, you can actually come to this night shop here at night in Grand Trad. Um, and having a lot of money is good because you can actually buy the pinnacle items from this guy, Cautious Shopkeep. Um, so if you buy, these items in here are actually like very, very good. Um, especially because these ones are basically essentially your items that you know, make up uh, an elemental weakness. Um, I used a lot of ice chunks um, for the boss battles against, you know, um, the Gatoris, for example, as well as enemies within those dungeons. But the accessories that this guy gives you is, is something to behold. So as you can see, 
You've got Praetorian Cloth, which reduces turn icon cost of guard commands by half, which essentially means that you can get a free guard off pretty much with everyone um, in your party, which is super useful to have. But it's this one here that is definitely the one thing that a lot of people will be looking for, and it is the Paper Doll. Um, which is able to perform two consecutive actions um, actions use turn icons as normal so people are thinking that this one will give you two turns or two actions per press turn but i don't exactly think that's the case i think what it means is you can use because in for example in persona when you hit a weakness you get it once more so you can actually just infinitely hit weaknesses however with the press turn system it basically just passes the turn on to the next um, player or next party member and you're actually getting just an extra turn if you hit a weakness in this case however you can actually do use the same character and basically just you and use another once more to hit multiple weaknesses rather than going through four party members and you know because every time you, if you want to go back to that party member to hit a weakness if that party member is the only one that can hit a weakness for example you'll need to pass your turns and in that case you may actually not have enough turns to pass to get back to the person to hit the weakness it's a bit convoluted, but basically, I don't think this means that, at least from the description, I don't think it necessarily means that you get two actions per turn, because that would be extremely broken for an item that only costs 49k. <laughs> um, but in saying that, I'm not too sure, because obviously I haven't bought it yet, and the full game is not released yet. Um, so it really depends on, um, you know, how, I guess, the wording and translation is. It could mean that, it might not mean that, but this item, regardless, is definitely very good, and it costs a lot of money, and it's good to have it. You've also got all these items, items that prevent, you know, um, uh, status effects like hex, days, paralysis, etc., etc. Um, and then you also get um, this forget me not as well, which prevents forget. So yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. That is basically the farming guide. So essentially, you just come to the Grand Cathedral, wait until the red crystal part, and then you bounce between the red crystals with infinitely spawning skeletons. And yeah, you can just bash on them until you get so much XP that it's gonna be uh, coming out of years so if you don't enjoyed this video definitely please leave a like and definitely subscribe for more metaphor re Fantasia I do have a lot more videos coming for this game and of course when the game releases I'll be doing my full playthrough as well as any other secrets um, that I find and discover along the way so thanks for watching everyone really appreciate all the support and I hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you in the next metaphor re Fantasia video